In this video, I'll talk about cults and divinities, Egyptian mythology, the cosmogonies, um, the Heliopolitan, the Memphite, the Hermopolitan, the Theban, and other uh, cosmogonic notions. Now, first, remember I went to University of Phoenix, and there are some of the people gangs talking me. And, you know, basically, let me just read this. I'm going to read two excerpts from the book, uh, Egyptian Mythology by Veronica, Veronica Lons. Or Ions. So, let's just read the first paragraph. So you see the relations to the um, nun as well as the phoenix, uh, the Benu bird, Ben Ben. So, Ra or Re or Fra there's different ways of saying it, was the god personifying the sun in its strength. His name meaning simply sun. He was early identified with Atum, the creator god of Heliopolis, his chief cult center. Thus, though sometimes Atum was considered to have created Ra, more often Ra was said to have emerged from none by the effort of his own will. It was thought that he rose from the primeval waters enclosed within the petals of a lotus blossom, which is the symbol of rebirth. Well, that's not in the paragraph. Anyway, which enfolded him once more when he returned to it each night, or that he rose in the shape of a phoenix, the Bennu bird, and alighted on the pyramidal top of an obelisk, the Ben Ben stone, which symbolized a ray of the sun. The most sacred object of the Temple of Ra at Heliopolis was this Ben Ben stone, whose gilded surfaces caught and reflected the morning sun. The site of this temple was said to be the primordial hell itself, and the house of Ben Ben was at its center. Okay, so basically, moving on, um, Ka is the personality or transcendent genius, Ba is the soul. There were women at funeral rituals, processions such as the um, Osirian procession and ritual, where you have Nephthys, Nephthys and Isis being. Um, represented as women who are acting. They're women who know they're acting, they know they're not these goddesses, and they're done by women. There is no room for homosexual thought or gender feminism in the Egyptian mythology. That's how you know that uh, Freemasons, who base almost every one of their ideas on occult and true meaning, which is the original meaning, the hidden meaning, which is going back to these non-homosexual, these these anti-homosexual Egyptian mythology um, rites, cults, and divinities. It's, you should bear that in mind. So Osiris was identified with the hawk-headed seeker, and he took, um, he amalgamated, or, you know, some people say usurped some of the roles of Ra, um, such as the relationship to the Nile, um, the, the role as chief sun god etc so horse's sons watched the canopic jars when you were um I'm, I'm trying to follow my notes and trying to piece them together for you when you were um basically when you you passed away and there was a democratization of the afterlife so not only it came to a point where not only pharaohs could go to the afterlife and had certain rituals so did the common man and these canopic jars were expensive and their their rituals were associated with the pharaohs the common man rarely had the canopic jars so the the four sons of horus which were um emset happy duet duamatif and kebe hesenuf um, were the guardians of the canopic jar jars and different parts of your organs different organs were placed in these jars and they did rituals such as removing the brain through the nose okay so osiris um, he had a robe of feathers, which symbolized righteousness, and an atef crown, which was a white crown of feathers. Also, there's more, you know, help symbolize righteousness, of course. He also had the royal crooked scepter and whip, and the uas scepter, which was only carried by gods. He was green, which symbolized fertility. Okay, so this is important. Because Osiris later, which is the main part point of this video, the main point of this video is to show you that the Europeans' twist of Egyptian mythology was a dark one. When the Ptolemies entered Egypt, masonry became evil. And Freemasonry 
which emerged under that name in England, some say in the 13th century, some say the 14th century, some say the 15th century. And it goes back to the poems that I, I speak about, but I'm not going to get into them. So Usur Hop was the Egyptian names when Apis was combined with Osiris. The Greeks said it was Osorapis, which was changed to Serapis, and Ptolemy Soter made it the official god of Egypt and Greece. I believe it was Ptolemy Soter, it was a Ptolemy. Um, and he was, he, he was portrayed with Cerebus at his feet. This is key, this is important. There will be a lot of people that say, how do you connect Serapis to Hades, which is central to what I'm saying. I'll get to that in a minute. First, let me finish up with these notes. The Hyksos used a ram head on a phoenix. This is key. Because you have um, the Baphomet. Okay? This is where they get this idea of a Baphomet. The goat head. Also called the ram head. It was when the Hyksos, the foreign kings of the 15th dynasty, came in. Okay? Also, you had the good gods, which were the pharaohs, who were considered the gods themselves, and the great gods, who were the gods the pharaohs represented. You know, Nun, Ra, Amun, Osiris, Horus, etc. So Ra was the sun, Thoth was the moon, and the Amun, Ra, priesthood resided over the others. When the pharaoh lost ba battles, or look bad, or was replaced, the priest, the chief priest of, um, the high priest of Amun-Ra uh, gained favor, and he, he resided over the other priesthoods. This is why they presented the Rosetta Stone to the Ptolemies, because these people had replaced the, 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 prior, the previous pharaohs, and thus given the chief priest more power and donations, and he wanted to gain favor, and he was fulfilling his role. He was taking advantage of the political situation. And so he presented this stone, among other gifts, to the Ptolemies in order to gain favor. Now, the Bennu bird is important, as well as the Sphinx, as well as Phoenix. And think about why I say that. So the cult of Isis um, remained with Romans, and it was on the island of Philae, I believe it was an island, as late as the 6th century. I'm hoping I have everything here right. I'll put in the notes any corrections. Okay, and I would like to end this video first with um, reading the last paragraph of Veronica uh, Ion's book, Egyptian Mythology. And I believe this is a European. I, you know, her name makes me think she's a European, which is key also to this, because you can't say, oh, this is um, Afrocentric... Um, dribble or this is afrocentric nonsense because it's written by a european and what does this person say flat out the egyptian gods may have owed much of their popularity outside egypt and their strength in the face of other deities within egypt um to the sure faith they offered of life after death pay close attention now the greek and roman deities have had become figures in stylized myths which bore comparatively little relation to the everyday concerns of their worshippers the myths were stories told largely for entertainment, and the gods depicted in them lacked mystery. So they did not take their own mythology seriously. And this is um, the last and perhaps the most important sentence I will read you. The Egyptian deities, on the other hand, even during the Greco-Roman period, never lost their symbolic associations with the all-important cycles of birth and death agelessly significant the last two words <clears throat> agelessly significant now some of you will say well these are cults from 2000 years ago you know what makes you think that people uh, believe this to this day w what is christianity what is judaism what is islam cults from thousand years ago 2000 years ago christianity thousands of years ago uh, judaism no 1400 years ago uh, islam and people, masses of people believe him. So Hades is the one with Cerebus in Greek mythology. So why is Serapis with uh, Cerebus? Why does Serapis resemble Hades? Because the Temple of Set, the Hyksos, and the cults of Hades, the, 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 the Greeks and the Romans 
took a wicked twist of the Egyptian mythology. Thank you.